Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Spare Parts, and today I'll be unboxing and reviewing set number 75359, the 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper Battle Pack. Set came out in the year 2023, so the year right now. Comes with 108 pieces and retails for $19.99, but I got for a steal of a deal for $15.99 at Target. Don't know if you can still get it for that, but I'm really glad I did. Anyway, let's get into the unboxing. Taking a look at the box art, we can kind of see what the build is supposed to look like. It reminds me of the Swamp Speeder, like, or the Kashyyyk Battle Pack from 2014, I think. I have that set also, and this is like the same build, just like blue and, and light gray instead of, I think it's green or red. I don't know, but that's an interesting build. See, there's like a turret, and then there's some minifigures. And then on the sides, we just have the boring pictures. Usually nothing interesting on the sides. And then on the back... We have a picture of it from a different angle. It doesn't really add much, but it shows the new stud shooter design. I don't have any of these, and I'm kind of curious how they work. It looks like kind of a puny little turret there, though. But yeah, I'm excited to see this build. This is another set that has thumb tabs, unfortunately, or really just one thumb tab. Okay, here it goes. Oh, wow. Oh, I just ripped that off. I hate that so much. I really wish LEGO would just use tape. It's so much easier. I mean, it might keep costs down for them, but it just annoys me. And then on the inside here... Oh, what are these? Oh, well, that's an interesting bag. I've never seen that before. That must be just their visors and stuff. Oh, really tiny instruction manual. It's been a real long time since I've built a battle pack before, so this is not what I was expecting. I didn't know the bags weren't numbered. I mean, it makes sense because it's such a small set, but it looks like we have one bag for the big pieces and one bag for the tiny pieces. And then we have like a bag for the visors, which is kind of strange. I don't really remember that. And what happened to this instruction manual? Like, it's smart of them to cut costs by making it smaller, but like, that's the tiniest instruction manual I've ever seen. Like, wow, it never used to look like that. So here it is all finished and built, and I think it looks really good. It's one of the better battle pack builds I've seen. It really reminds me of the 2014 Kashyyyk Battle Pack, or I don't really remember what the name is, but it came with this vehicle here, which is also a Swamp Speeder, which is what I think this type of vehicle is called. And it's really similar to that. It does have the blue coloring, though. Not sure if that's very accurate, but I really do like the color scheme. And I think, yeah, it's a pretty good build at first glance. Taking a look at the play features in this set, starting off, we do have spots for the minifigures. And I'll grab two here to show you how they go in. You kind of can put their blasters in as well. But really what you're supposed to do is you're just supposed to kind of sit them down on these chairs right here. I think you tilt these back. These are supposed to be like the mud, mud guard things. And then you put them down here. And then I think you tilt them back up. So that kind of keeps them in the thing. And it does use these nice black chairs so that they are really easy to pull out because they're only connected by two studs. There we go. They're both in there now. And then I kind of drive it. It doesn't have space for four minifigures, but I think it works with two. Because the other two have, like, the jet packs on the back, so they can't really sit in chairs. They can, like, fly around around it. And then they just kind of drive it. You can also attach their blasters to the build when they're in the vehicle, which is a feature I really like. Because then you can just kind of transport them. And there's these clips on the side. You just kind of slide them in. And then I guess it doesn't really matter what type of blaster it is. They all really fit there. That looks a little strange, but you can kind of slide them in, and that's extra storage, and I really like that. There are also some stud shooters on the front, and they are the newer version of them that kind of shoot them from the sides. And the way these work is you still press down on this piece right there, and I think they actually fire a lot farther. I mean, you can't really see how far they flew, but they do seem like they fly with greater power. And I feel like that's, like, a good part about these new ones. The only one thing I have a kind of a problem with is on the older one. When you put the stud shooters in the front, that's what you did with the older version, is you would attach the stud shooters to the front. You can kind of like tilt them side to side and you kind of lose that on this one. You know what? I'll save that for another video. We should do a comparison of these two. But I really do feel like you lose some posability of these cannons on the front, but I do feel like the power is better. So really, it's a nice improvement. Taking a look at the design of this thing, because I really do feel like this has some really cool like parts usage and I feel like there's some new ones on here or like ones I don't have, and that is these pieces right here, these like weird circle half or quarter circle pieces. I've never really seen them before, and they really work well for this. I feel like they have that like nice de-studded design that the set really has. And on the back, we have like this new piece right here. It's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it is a new piece. I'll pull up a picture on the screen of what it is. And it is a new piece, and I think it works really well for this set. So I feel like the design on this set is much better than the older version. It just has some greater improvements. Moving on to minifigures, we have the first minifigure in the set, and probably the most basic, and that is just the 332nd Clone Trooper. 
he's really just the normal like no accessories except for his like blaster it's just just basically the normal trooper and something i noticed about this one that's different from the rest of them is he kind of has like a different depth on their like front pieces like these front i don't know what they are the belts like this one has like the gray shading it's really difficult to see but one of them has like the gray shading around them and the other one doesn't right here so I feel like there is a difference between the torso. I don't know if it's intentional. And he fell. Man, some of these are not weighted very well. On the back, he has normal clone trooper back printing. And under the helmet, they have all the same head. So I'll only show it here. It's like this newer clone face. I like it a lot more than the old version, which is just like angry face. So nice improvement on the head. And I really like that helmet printing. That's really nice. Moving on to the other 332nd clone troopers in the set. I don't know why they're called that on the box. It's literally just, they're literally called the 332nd clone trooper, but they really should be called like jetpack trooper because they have jetpacks on the back, which is a nice detail. I really like that and they're pretty unstable. So I got to do that carefully. But yeah, they have a blue jetpack and I think it works really well with these colors of these minifigures. And I think that's the only difference with them, except for like, they have like the normal blasters and not like the long one. But underneath the helmet, it's the same exact print. And I think the helmet, is the same print as well. Finally, we have Clone Captain Vaughn. I think that's his name. That's what it says on the box. Not sure how to pronounce that, but I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it. And I think he is an actual character from the Clone Wars, and he looks pretty good. I think the only real difference is he has a different torso printing, which has like this gray rectangle on it, and then he has like this visor on his helmet, so not much different. And I think on the back, yeah, his back printing is a little different. He has like a fake jetpack thing. The set is not just about the minifigures, though. What you're really buying it for is the turret. Like you saw before, the set also does come with a little turret. And I think it's kind of cool. It doesn't add much to the set, but you can also launch a stud out of it. There it goes. And with a lot of power, I think it's just an excuse to include an extra stud shooter in the set. Something that's really cool about these minifigures here is that LEGO finally stopped just giving them stud shooters and actually gave them, like, their actual blasters, which I think is super cool. Something I've wanted for a long time because I feel like they're really off-balanced or they fall over all the time with the normal stud shooters. And I really like the inclusion of normal blasters. It's a lot better. Great job, Lego. So now time to talk about value. And I feel like this set is an okay value. I bought it for $15.99, which was like a deal. And that was the reason I bought it was because it was on a deal. I wasn't like willing to pay $19.99 or $20, which is what its usual price tag is. It's like $20 for 108 pieces. That's like 20 cents per piece, which is pretty bad. But like it's a battle pack, so battle packs usually have terrible price for piece. But actually, like usual battle packs kind of have like piece counts in the 150s and 130s, so I feel like this is not the greatest value. Covering two sections here, loose parts and stickers and prints. There are no stickers and prints on the set except for like some minifigures, but that's not really like a print. It is a print, but I don't usually count that. And then weak parts, there aren't any weak parts on the stud. It's really stable unless you accidentally fire the stud shooters, but that's not really a weak part because it's like supposed to happen. So I would say there are no weak parts in the set. So overall, I feel like the set is a nine out of 10. I really like the minifigures in the set. It's just the one letdown is the price is a little steep, but I got it for a deal. I'm not really putting that into my ranking. I'm just putting it for what it would usually sell for. So I'd say it's a 9 out of 10 because I really like the build. I'd say this is like one of the best battle pack builds you've had, or the ones that I have built at least. I really like the blue and dark gray. It's a nice color combo. I think it works really well. And the minifigures are really detailed, even though they're all pretty much the same. I still think they're great army builders. So it's a 9 out of 10 Lego set here. So there you have it, guys. That's my review and unboxing of set number 75359, the 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper Battle Pack. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.